Good afternoon, my name is John Kelly. I'm the principal here in Chagas Valley Hayes College, County Cavan. This afternoon we have our forestry open day. Normally you'd join us for such an open day, but today we're doing it remotely due to COVID-19 restrictions. You'll be joined by my colleague, who are going to talk about what we do in the forestry enterprise. And then in studio here, we look forward to engaging you with your questions over the next 30 minutes. And welcome here to a very clammy, warm County Cavan and workshop three to our studio here, where we're going to be spend the next 30 minutes with you talking about our course here on forestry. Uh, the purpose of this half an hour is to show you that the college is open for business as usual, and also then to give you the opportunity using Zoom questions and answers, which is at the bottom of your screen, to be able to give us questions that we can answer during the, the course of the next 30 minutes. Just a little bit about myself. I'm the principal here for seven years. I've been involved in Chagas education for almost 20 years. But I suppose more importantly, I've been involved in the land and in agriculture all my life, and I'm passionate about it. And hopefully over the next 30 minutes, you'll see that from our staff here beside me, who will, int will introduce themselves shortly, that they're also passionate about that. And if you decide to come here and study forestry, that you will be able to learn from people that really care about what we teach here in the college. So on my left, I'd like the first colleague to, to introduce yourself. Uh, thanks, John. Uh, my name's Marianne Lyons. I'm the forestry teacher here in Ballyhays. I've been teaching here for uh, over 15 years, and um, the, I have a background in forestry. I did forestry when I left, immediately when I left school in UCD and in environmental management. And I've also worked in the indus forest industry as contracting and in the UK and New Zealand as well. So, uh, yeah, we look forward to uh, answering questions this evening. And you're not from Cavan like myself. No. I'm from Donegal. You're from... I'm from Wexford originally. And uh, I just came to Cavan from initially for three years and ended up staying. It's a very different landscape. It's uh, to Wexford in the southeast, but uh, it grows on you. And uh, we get students from all over the country on yeah, the forestry that's why I course. That from... So it's great. It's like, it is really good. We have them from Donegal to Wexford and down as far as Cork, West Cork. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a nationwide uh, effort. So we'll it's back, great. We'll be back with you shortly. And Arthur Cairns, um, I'm the forestry technician here in Ballyhays. I've been in Chagas now 30 years plus. Um, I originally started in, in St. Pat's Agriculture College in Manon. It was closed up then and came here in 2000. Did a spell on the machinery and then was moved across to the forestry um, uh, about 15 or 16 years ago and I've been there since. Yeah, and, and some people, um, you have another very interesting pastime. I would say some people, a lot of our students would be very interested and what you do in your past, and just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we do a bit. We do a bit of car rally, and I, I co-drive. Uh, just this year, I'll be co-driving for James Wilson, Billy Coleman winner, and we won the first round of the Irish Forest Championship in Carrigan-Shaw early in the year. And since the pandemic has came in, you know, all all motorsport activities have been stopped. So we're really looking forward to, to the Irish Forest Championship with James. And and you, you already know. have some notable achievements. In yeah, we, yes, we we. Uh, in 2014, won the BRC, the British Rally Championship overall with Daniel McKenna, with Citroen and Pirelli. Um, we have a, a car of our own, Mark II Escort. Myself and my son, we won the Border Championship twice yes. overall. Yeah, so you're accomplished. And I, I didn't mention that for no reason, but because plenty of our students come here, loads of them, and yeah. they're interested. Yeah, we have, we have, we've had a few past students who, are, who, are, who are, do a bit of rallying, and I would meet them there at, at, at events. Yes. And even... even our, uh, as spectators too, we will come across. And each Arthur, other. you mentioned that you came from an ag background in machinery, but there's a lot of machinery in forestry too. Oh yes, as as you can see here behind me, we have some of our machines here we have in the college. The tractor here in forwarder is only only a small bit. We have a, a chipper, uh, um, and and we have uh, you know a lot of saws, uh, a, a, a tractor winch as well. You yes. know, and to do it forestry, we have, we have it. Uh, one piece of one vital piece of equipment is, is here beside you, John. Is our simulator? Yeah. You know, because there's a scarcity of operators. You know, yeah. it's it's an add-on to our course. Yeah. And it's there for our students to, to work yeah. on. Yeah. So hopefully we get a chance for people to come back and see our simulator here. It's quite an impressive machine. It is. And it is certainly, indeed. if you have any questions that you want to ask on that, 
it shout them out because it, it is it's fascinating yeah and a, a decent investment and a commitment to the industry yeah and it also it has it has proved itself you know with our students yeah okay we'll be back to you shortly Arthur. okay and lastly John, my name is Anne Beryl. I've been here for 30 something years and my role here is house manager and student welfare. I would say my main concern here is the student welfare. I would, like yourself, be passionate about their welfare and try to make sure that everything goes well for them. They enjoy the years here. And the one thing I've always noticed about the students here and the, the setup, it's a sociable um, college. We have had many and many the, the, the um, 25, 30th, 50th anniversaries. Yeah. And the students reckon that the friendships that they make during their time here seem to go on forever. Yeah, I'm glad you Last mentioned that, forever. Anne, because the, the history of this college is over 110 years yes. of training people in this half of the country. And like even at this stage, we're getting to see people that we, if we could, time moves on, some indeed. of the sons and daughters of, uh, of the parents that were former students here. Indeed. And indeed, grandparents, some of them have been students here as well. So it is quite a, a, a cheap, a impressive history of delivering education. Mm -hmm. So um, that's fine mm -hmm. and we'll be back to you shortly as well. We're also going to talk about accommodation and, and some of the questions. Yeah. If you have any questions on accommodation, do, do please share them with us and, and Anne should be able to answer those. So we're going to move on now to uh, our next video and that's of Marianne. It was taken earlier in the year and she's going to talk about our course and our enterprise here. My name is Marianne Lyons and I'm the enterprise leader for the forestry unit at Ballyhays College. Uh, forestry has been taught here for over 30 years and there are just over 45 hectares of forest and woodland within the college estate. This area is managed with a focus on providing practical training sites for students attending the level five and level six forestry courses. The forest area here is made up of mixed and pure conifer and broadleaf sites at various stages of growth. It incorporates amenity, agroforestry, continuous cover and biodiverse areas. It's stratified into management plots, averaging approximately one hectare in size. Every year, specific areas within the college are identified for student groups to consolidate their skills and complete work projects from beginning to end. This includes risk assessment, identifying environmental factors, planning and carrying out the operations themselves. At Bally Hayes, gain a variety of practical skills from timber measurement and chainsaw skills and felling techniques, uh, tree planting, vegetation control, formative shaping, fencing are carried out in the latter half of the college year. Students also use the forest area for digital mapping exercises, detailed forest measurement activities and silviculture. Increasingly, technology is used in forestry operations. We have a forestry forwarder and harvester simulator in situ, which students have access to throughout the year. Electronic calipers used for machine calibration and other timber measurements are also available for practical training. Handheld GPS devices compatible with GIS software for mapping are increasingly used by our second year students to develop plans. The combination of indoor classwork and applied outdoor skills creates the perfect training environment for students to gain experience and build confidence before they go on work placement or start their career in any area of forestry. Welcome back. And I just want to remind you that there is a question and answer, a Q&A section at the bottom of your screen where you'll be able to answer questions, ask us questions and hopefully we'll be able to answer them for you. So please do use that. So Marianne, that was taken earlier in the year and, and really what I want to hone in for now is the farm. The farm is really, really important to what we do here. And in your case, the forestry enterprise, tell yes, us about how the, you use that. Well, we're in the middle of Drumlin country here, so we have a wide range of soil types on the farm as well. And there are about uh, 50 hectares, just under 50 hectares of woodland and native woodland and old woodland. And also, uh, you know, maybe forestry that's been planted in the last 30, 40 years um, as and when the forestry course itself developed. So we've a great resource, but it also works hand in hand with the farm enterprise. So we try every year to get our students involved in a project that's within the college grounds and that maybe complements the overall management plan of the farm and the forestry. So that could be anything from 
you know, the, the, managing one of the smaller plots, doing the site assessment, the safety uh, uh, assessments, then planning the work, consulting with the enterprise managers, and then, you know, go bring, bringing the work from beginning to end. And we have also agroforestry, which is integrates the farm side of things, and also the hedge planting and biodiversity improvement around the farm. So we collaborate on an ongoing basis for real time projects with the students. And, and just I suppose on the, the forestry enterprise, like protecting the environment, it's a, it's a skill in itself, isn't it? Like between planting or harvesting, like there is, yes. people have to be able to manage like them and know we, what to do. A big part of our forest and one of the core subjects in our, in our course is sustainable forestry. And it's something that we've been, you know, forestry is maybe pushed for and it's been integrated <coughs> into forest management for the last 20 plus years. So it's quite normal for us now to consider the environmental factors and always they're considered uh, whenever there's a new plan. And also we try to uh, adjust or change or adapt according to uh, what the forestry in Ireland is doing as well, because it's a relatively new enterprise. So yes, yes. we have different management systems and that the college parcels of land allows for that. Okay, so we're going to move on to the course. Just the level five is where students start with on forestry. Can you go through the structure of that? I know you mentioned it in the video, but just to go yeah, through that the, again. I suppose it's pretty much half and half uh, practical and theory. So we would spend half of our week in the class or doing class work. Uh, I probably envisage that, that may, some of that may be uh, delivered remotely, but we still we stick to our half theory, half practical. And we generally do the theory part and then bolster that with uh, and reinforce it with the practical and be out, being outside and using the resources we have at our fingertips and also using uh, uh, our access to um, local private owners, properties, forest properties and collaborating with the local forestry advisor and research projects here in the college as well. Okay, and, and the, I have one question here already and it's how does the forestry course last, how long does it last? And how can I get a green cert from this course? So it kind of leads on to my next question. Yes, which is about so, progression. Yeah, the level five course is what you would initially apply for. And that's one year. Where in, real, in realistically, you're only here for six months and two months work placement. So that runs from this September until next March. And then there's two months placement. And then if you pass the level five, you can automatically get access to the level six program. And that is another uh, year academic year in the college and, that's, yeah. and that once you get your level six in your second year that is the same qualification as equivalent to your agricultural green cert or your equine yes. or so if you want to be classified as a young trained farmer yeah, young trained farmer it, it, it is exactly years. equivalent to a green okay, cert I just i want to move on so the we're subject to public health requirements mm. and there's a lot of uncertainty obviously but you did mention that 50 50 so if we we have to reduce our numbers on site our plan is to use Zoom, and you've been doing that already. Yeah, we've done that already in the last term. We've used remote learning for a lot of our theory side. But, you know, we, we envisage that we will still continue to keep up our quite a lot of practical. And we're, we're used to uh, small numbers on forestry because of the risks involved and the tutor to, uh, trainee uh, ratio we're used to small numbers so and we're used to using PPE we're used to distancing so a lot of that is just adapting rather yes. than a, a major change. Okay. So we're going to move on now to, to talk about skills but before I talk to Arthur about that we're just going to watch our next video and uh, that's one of our contractors out training some of our students Adrian earlier in the year as well so we, we'll just have a look at that video now. Straightforward normal standard felon cut um, tree has been risk assessed for dangers, our escape routes are clear and we're just going to do a normal standard felon cut on this, okay? So what I'm looking for you is that we're putting in our sink cut, about anything between 20 and 30%, so in around the quarter is good, sink cut in nice and tidy, that that point meets perfect, okay? Normal standard felon cut on the back and we'll put the felon lever in and tip the tree over, is that okay? Who wants to do this one? Brian, good man. Okay, lads, all I'll ask you is, is just step back behind that you can see enough, but yet are safe.
Okay, welcome back. What I'd like to think is evident from that video is it's clear that what we say that 50% of it's practical training, 50% is in the classroom. Well, there's a demonstration of our students earlier in the year with Adrian Smith learning about uh, tree filling. And that's important, I suppose, when you look at an agriculture college. We have the farm, we have the forestry enterprise, and we have access to all these uh, remote locations uh, because of our contacts with industry. And that gives us that great opportunity to come and do skills training, uh, where a lot of courses or colleges that you go to, I mean, it just won't be the same. So I'm, I just, that's a fantastic video, and you can see what our students are learning from that. So I'm just going to go over to Arthur and ask a few questions, Arthur. So a lot of the skills we do here, you're involved in delivering them. And I suppose, looking behind you, it's not hard to see some of the skills that you yeah, do Yeah, well, that's right, John. We, we, uh, the first skill would, when the students would come in is manual handling. Because a lot of manual handling, a lot of handling and, and lifting in, in forestry, even starting the saw, how to do it properly, lifting logs, you know, lift properly. So manual handling is the first skill. As you've seen on the, on the, on the video there, the chainsaw is, a, is another skill. It's a, it's a fairly big skill. It's divided into three sections. You have chainsaw maintenance first. Then you go with the students will go out on site uh, and then fell trees. So it's small trees up to guide bar with 380 millimeters or 15 inches. And the third section of that is uh, stacking and cross cutting. So that, that takes um, a good week out, out on site to do that. And the students are assessed uh, to sitting in guild standards. And then I would assess them again then to QQA standards. Right, so that's uh, the chainsaws. The next then we have pesticide application so is another one. Uh, formative uh, or um, high pruning, formative shaping, planting, fencing, and anything to do to it forestry, we, any do, skills we, we do. do. Yeah. And some of them, I suppose, when you look at a tractor or a trailer like that, they'd be quite daunting. And would you have seen people come from a low level? Yes, we, 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 have, had, we have had students that was it, couldn't even start a chainsaw. Was it, I, I remember one student, he was afraid to even start the chainsaw. Didn't know what way it was going to work. And he, he was one of our comp, most competent students at the end of the year. You know, so don't, don't be afraid. Come, come along. Uh, you know, we, I do tell students to ha take their own saw, saw in with them. If the safety features are all in the saw, uh, we, if the saw is safe to use, we can use it on site because that's the saw you'll be working with when you, when you go back out. I have an interest in machinery, as maybe a lot of people watching this would know, and some people don't know, but I see the chainsaw behind you. Um, and I've actually learned a lot from Marianne and Arthur on the chainsaw, particularly to respect it. Maybe, maybe talk about the safety. Yeah, you know, a, a well-maintained well -maintained saw is a safe saw. You know, our students would come in, they would dismantle the saw, put it back together, uh, to proper chain tension, how to, sharpen the saw pro how to sharpen the saw properly, you know, things like that. Um, the other thing when they're out on site then, to know the cuts, you know, yeah. assess the tree, what way, what way is the, the lean, the weight, wildlife, things like that. Um, to know the cuts, normal felling cut, a tree leaning back, there's a special cut for that, a tree leaning forward, another cut. Yeah. You know, 90% of the times it's, it's, you know, people are untrained, don't know how to cut the tree properly, and it's, it's, that's what causes accidents. Yes, and again, I have a question here, you kind of answered it about, if I haven't used a chainsaw before, does that matter? It, it doesn't matter. In fact, that's the guys that we would love because it's, it's, they're, the, they're the easiest trained. A, a guy that done a bit of chainsaw is harder to train because he's got into bad habits yeah. and he's, he's, he's harder, harder to train. Okay, thanks Arthur. So just before I go to you, Anne, I have a question here, Marianne. Is the level five uh, strong enough to gain employment in the industry uh, or would you need to go to level six? And that's from Keith. Uh, definitely, there's plenty of work out there in forestry at the moment. Um, even you know, in the last few years, uh, students either at establishment or uh, you think of the age of the forest estate, uh, private forest estate is really catching up as well now. So there's a lot of work in thinning and managing forest timber measurement as well and mapping is, is a skill that we we would uh, teach here as well and that is becoming very important for forest owners to measure what they want. Um, what I would generally say to students is that there's plenty of work out there. The way that the forestry industry is structured you would generally have a lot of contract work so often they would work with maybe a bigger contractor first and then build it up and uh, then uh, possibly the level six then helps 
for business management and taking it that little bit step for, okay. further. But definitely at level five, you come out with skills ready to uh, go and start places. Before we talk about how to apply, like you have some examples of students with level five operating machinery yeah. from what they learned in the, the seminar like here. All our students go on a, an eight week placement and because the forestry industry is actually quite regulated with regard to safety, you know, Arthur mentioned manual handling earlier, they do first aid, uh, they have their chainsaw certificates, but they also have access to say a simulator, they can practice in the evenings, in the afternoon, uh, the ones who are interested in going down that route and they build up the skills over time and they also then have the forestry knowledge to back it up so they know why they're doing something and not just how to do it. Okay thanks for that Marianne. Um, so just uh, if you spend a moment to talk to us about how a person applies. Well first and foremost you must have uh, access to a computer or a laptop and have an email address set up for yourself. Then uh, proceed on to the Chagask website. The top right hand corner, click on the um, apply, now. apply now. And it's always advisable to have a few documents uh, to hand before you start, John. Your, a copy of your birth cert, a copy of a medic, of, um, of a proof of your PPS number, a picture of your front, front and back of your driving license if applicable, your medical card if applicable. And also, if you had the good luck to be born after the 15th of August 2002, you must have a signed consent form. That signed consent form is on the link on the application form site. Okay, okay, thanks for that, Anne. And we have a question here about international students. International students can apply, it's straightforward oh, for EU citizens. We would have had international students yes. here over the years, Marianne, would not be right. Yeah, we've had a we've have had a few. You know, predominantly our courses tend to be mostly male, and we would welcome female applicants always as well. We've got two female teachers teaching on the course, and also um, anyone anyone's a. a who is interested can apply. Yes. We do have a selection process which is based on uh, an interview, a numeracy literacy, their education, um, and any experience that they have as well. Yeah. So um, it's not an automatic in, and everybody is kind of screened or uh, assessed for application in the same, exactly the same way. Okay. And I'm back to you again. So a lot of our students come from secondary school. Some of them are a little bit older, but we do have support for anybody that needs it. And maybe explain about support and what, what we offer. We will offer the exact same support as what the student had in secondary school. If they provide the necessary reports, um, the educational psychologist report, the same as what they would have had to supply for to get the support in secondary school. And that's throughout the year. Coming up to exams then is a worrying time for students, but we have trained um, readers, scribes, will come in to sit with the, the student to do whatever they require to, to um, scribe, read, whatever they wish for. We also have computer software for learning that's in use throughout the year, and if necessary, a note taker in the classroom, if necessary. And over the last couple of months, our exams have continued remotely. How have you dealt with giving support to students remotely? Quite easily, either by phone or by Zoom, or by, not Zoom, the Moodle or uh, Kahoot formats. Yes. But it's very, very easy to, to, to do that. There's yes. been no problems with them whatsoever. It's the same as if the student was sitting beside us and we were okay. them. Okay, and Anne, maybe uh, there are a couple of other areas I'd like you to cover. One would be accommodation and then the other would be grants. Can you tell us right. about those two areas? Yeah, well, we have accommodation for 50 people. Now, it's not, um, it's not the, the rates, but it's, it's basic, but very adequate. And um, depending on the, we'll be led by the HSE guidelines on this year's uh, availability. It depends on what we're going to be told. Yes. But the grant then is a maintenance grant payable um, for your, your time here. Of course, it's means tested. Yeah. Uh, it's not applicable or it won't be um, open for application until after the 15th of July or the 5th of July, I think. But when a student is accepted onto the course, they will be given information on applying for the, the grant. The maintenance grant. And the main thing to remember is the maintenance grant is paid not by Susie, or not to apply to Susie, but to Southwestern. Okay. 
have a question here on how much the accommodation is in Ballyhays. Currently 70 euros per week. Okay, and the accommodation, I do, it is important. A lot of our students, as we've said already, come from yeah. far away from County Cavan. And accommodation important. is important, but we are subject to public yeah. health guidelines. And yes. once the guidelines permit, we'll have the we accommodation. And we look forward to welcoming in the, the new yes. students. Yes. Okay. And uh, you, again, going back to the grant, that, that's obviously very important to people as well. It's and, more uh, than important. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that, again, if you need help on that, don't be just contact Anne or myself and we can give further information on the grant. So I suppose just to, before we finish up, maybe Arthur. Again, if you tell me from your experience, what do students gain from, from a skills perspective? What do you think they really enjoy? Well, I, I've been talking to student, you know, students that have done the course. They really enjoyed the year in Valley Hills. You know, they, they didn't regret ever doing it. Um, the skills they got, you know, their, their chainsaw skills, uh, um, pesticide application goes towards their suds, uh, um, manual handling, they, they learned, learned an awful lot. And you know, they would come and tell you later on in life that this is the most enjoyable year they ever spent was it was in the college and um, you know we we get students from Donegal to Kerry to Cork you know they're all over the country and and every one of them would tell you that okay thanks Arthur and, and Marianne I'll leave the last word to you if you have yeah. any message for, for well yeah a lot of our students as well they kind of come with maybe an idea just that they want they like the idea of forestry and it's something that they've had in mind and they're not really sure and that's completely, you're not expected to have any sort of background in forestry to do the course. We also have very good progression within the course from level five to level six here in Valley Hayes and also with WIT. And we have a lot of contact with the industry too. And even some of our hosts now, Arthur mentioned the placement, some of our hosts are past students. And even there's, you know, one of our teachers is a past student. and. We, there's, we've got a real connection with the industry too. So, you know, it, it's definitely worth a look as an alternative maybe for some people who hadn't or were kind of thinking about it. Apply and see. Okay. So I'd like to thank all our contributors for, for their words uh, of advice to prospective students. So thank you very much. I, our, this half hour will be recorded and put on YouTube tomorrow. I would say that if you have any other questions to email any of the panelists here, you'll get our contact details on the Chagas website. And certainly email any further questions that you have to us, and we'll be able to answer those. I'm only a phone call away. Marianne's only a phone call away. Uh, we'll, we'll be contacting students as they apply over the next uh, couple of days. And we look forward to having you here in September. Thank you very much.